Hi Facebook friends, YouTube friends. It's Linda from Flourishing Table and I'm here to share a message today on peace. And I think it's very necessary for us to come to a place of peace during the trials and sufferings of our life. And I, I'm sitting in front of a picture in my home that is such a treasure to me. Um, it's kind of like the traveling pants. This picture has followed my family uh, over the last 30 years to many different places, homes, and it's just a constant source of, of peace for me. It's a reminder of I can, I can be still in the storm and there's beauty in the stillness. And when I look at the colors of this beautiful portrait, it reminds me of what awaits for me in heaven. This, this garden, a garden that God intended for us to live here on earth. But because of the fall of man, we know that that garden is on temporary hold for now. But the, the encouragement we can find that through an intimate relationship with Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we can come to the garden any time we want and rest in his presence. So I wanted to start off with the words to an old hymn. A sweet friend from church sang this song for me at an event I did um, last spring, almost around this time. And it was, the theme of it was life in the garden. And she had a blessed, the audience with this incredible, beautiful song of peace and comfort. So I'm going to read the words to part of this hymn. I come to the garden alone. He walks with me and he tells me I am his own. The joy we share as we tarry there like none I've never known. How beautiful is that? It's a beautiful portrait of getting alone with Jesus. That even if you don't leave your house, we're all quarantined now, we're all social distancing, but we can meet with our Savior anytime we would like. I have some scriptures that I want to talk about uh, with regards to peace because it is the word of God that brings us back to the promises that he is with us even if we're cut off from everyone else our God will never forsake us he always has his eye on the sparrow so the first verse that I want to look at that I think is a, a constant reminder of what God is calling us to do in times of worry and stress and uncertainty. He is our constant, but he gives us an instruction of how to find peace in the storm. So I'm reading from Philippians chapter four, verses six through nine. And many, many, many of you know this verse and have held on to it through those difficult times. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's gotta be both, our heart and our mind, they're connected. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned and received or heard from me and have seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. These words were penned by the Apostle Paul. 
uh, he was an ambassador of Christ like no other because of the suffering that God allowed him to experience in his lifetime. He actually has a list of those troubles that he faced, being shipwrecked and beaten and, and uh, cast out of his family and persecuted. And it, the list went on and on and on. So he's a great example of what it looks like to persevere in the Lord's strength. And when I think of our ability, because we have the Word of God and we have the power of the Holy Spirit in Christ Jesus, that indwells in us through a relationship, we have the ability to exchange what is of this world, the earthly circumstances that we cannot control, but exchange the truth of God's promises so that now our thoughts are not set on the storm, but on his heavenly promises. Because the word of God always points us to heaven because this life is temporary. It's but a mere mist. I love the verse um, in Psalms that, uh, that King David, you know, sings out to the Lord at the end of Psalm 139. He says, you have counted every breath before I even took one. We don't have to dread this storm. We have to be wise. We have to, I believe, do what we're told, what is recommended by our authorities, the government and the officials, the professional people. But once we've done our part, we have the incredible peace resting, again, in that blessed assurance that God already knows and he has given us our days. So I find great peace and comfort in that. I don't have to worry and allow my thoughts to lead me to a far off place except to his garden. His garden where there is rest and there is life and there is beauty and there is hope and it is in his garden that points us to eternity, a place of eternal rest and peace. I, I just find that in today's world, even if we eliminated this virus, we all have something to wring our hands about, to worry, to be heavy laden and burdened. But because of the love of Christ and the promises of his word, we can have peace. Another beautiful verse that I find great comfort in and again, it's an instruction. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. His perfect love will remove that element of stress that eventually contaminates our souls, our minds, and others. Isn't it true, especially women, moms, mothers, housewives, um, we have the ability to set the temperature in our homes. Our homes are a sanctuary. That's why I choose to surround myself with calming, pretty things. Even my paint color <laughs> represents peace. And I think it's really important to do that. Uh, we have that beautiful opportunity in creating a sanctuary in our own homes. I have a lot of artwork um, that represent gardens. I, I'm just drawn to them. And uh, one of them to my right, which you can't see, but it's the Garden of Grace from uh, Thomas Kincaid. So a lot of my artwork, a lot of things that I surround myself with in my home create an atmosphere of peace because this is my safe place from the world. This is my sanctuary. And I want to leave stress out of it as as much as I can, the Lord says, be a peacemaker as much as you can. There's some things, again, that are going to happen. Conflict will happen because we're people and we each have our own opinions and our own needs and our own hurts. So again, we can even create a sanctuary within our sanctuary because there will be conflict as long as there's other people. But God wants us 
to be peacemakers. It's a beautiful calling that we have as followers of Christ. Another verse that I'd like to share that's so beautiful. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you may have trouble. You actually will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. That's John 16, 13. And I'm sure many of you have heard that before. I love that we can trust that Heavenly Father to bring peace in places of unrest, in places of uncertainty. And I, I believe that peace brings beauty and color, not only to our lives and our environment, but it can bring peace to others. We can be the reset for other people as we speak a good word into their souls. A word that brings life, a word that breathes the Spirit of God into their souls. Even if they don't know Jesus, we have an incredible opportunity to minister to a hungry heart and a thirsty soul with the Spirit of God. I would really like to think that in this time of complete uncertainty, we don't know how long this virus is gonna last, we don't know if we're gonna be personally impacted by the virus, uh, we don't know financially how this is gonna affect us long term. There's so many aspects of our lives. I'm, right now I'm away from my family, my children, not, nothing about that is natural. Nothing about that is comfortable. But yet, the Lord has given me this indescribable peace. Even when my husband and I are so far from the children that we love. So my prayer for you today is found in Ephesians. I would love for you to circle this prayer in your Bibles Make note of it. I often tell people, write it on an index card. Put it everywhere. These verses that the Lord has given us. Write a date in your Bible that that became your promise. That became your prayer. Because God will lead you back to that one day. And you will remember these precious moments with him. As he whispered in the garden. Come walk with me, my daughter. Come walk with me, my child. Find a place of rest in my garden of hope and peace. So I'm going to read to you this prayer, again, penned by the Apostle Paul to the Church of Ephesians. Uh, the Church of Ephesus, I'm sorry. Um, this is probably one of the most beautiful gifts that we can give anyone that we love, and we're even a stranger, a neighbor, a family member. So let me read this prayer to you, and I pray that it stays with you and it becomes part of your prayer life. In Him, through faith, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. As I ask you, therefore, do not be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. See, Paul is saying, I'm coming to God by faith. I'm entering into his throne room. I am approaching the throne of grace, the altar of grace, with freedom and confidence to stand in the gap for you, my beloved. I pray out of that glorious, out of his glorious riches, that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that being rooted and established in love, May you have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, to know this love that surpasses knowledge, 
that you may be filled to full measure of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's Ephesians 3 verses 12 through 13 and then 15 through 21. I pray, dear friends, that this day will be a day of peace. God bless you and know that he is faithful.